Happiness in marriage is not something that just happens. A good marriage must be created. In the art of marriage, the little things are the big things. It is never being too old to hold hands. It is remembering to say, I love you at least once a day. It is never going to sleep angry. It is at no time taking the other for granted. The courtship should not end with the honeymoon. It should continue through all the years. having a mutual sense of values and common objectives. It is standing together facing the world. It is forming a circle of love that gathers in the whole family. It is doing things for each other, not in the attitude of duty or sacrifice, but in the spirit of joy. Always get dressed up, so words of appreciation, demonstrating gratitude in thoughtful ways. It is not looking for perfection in each other. Good luck. Oh, you don't need luck. Oh, here's the goat! It is cultivating flexibility, patience, understanding, and a sense of humor. Yeah, this is all giving each other an atmosphere in which each can grow. It is finding room for the things of the spirit. It is a common search for the good and the beautiful. It is establishing a relationship in which the independence is equal Dependence is mutual and the obligation is reciprocal. It is not only marrying the right partner, it is being the right partner. It is discovering what marriage can be at its best. Welcome to Hawkshead Parish Church. A special welcome to Jeremy and Helen. What we know will be a very happy and memorable day for them, even though today is the day that ended the longest spell of dry weather that, um, <laughs> that I can remember in the Lake District. Who gives this woman to be married to this man? I, Jeremy Donald Hare. I, Jeremy Donald Hare. Take you, Helen Elizabeth. Take you, Helen Elizabeth. To be my wife. To be my wife. I, Helen Elizabeth. I, Helen Elizabeth. Take you, Jeremy Donald Hare. Take you, Jeremy Donald Hare. To be my husband. To be my husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. 
in sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death us do part. Till death us do part. Till death us do part. Heavenly Father, by your blessing, let these rings be to Helen and Jeremy a symbol of unending love and faithfulness. To remind them of the vow and covenant which they've made this day. Helen Elizabeth, I give you this ring. As a sign of our marriage. As a sign of our marriage. Jeremy Donald Hare, I give you this ring. As a sign of our marriage. As a sign of our marriage. With my body, I honour you. With my body, I honour you. All that I am, I give to you. All that I am, I give to you. And all that I have, I share with you. And all that I have, I share with you. Within the love of God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the presence of God and before this congregation, Jeremy and Helen have given their consent and made their marriage vows to each other. I therefore proclaim that they are husband and wife. So my wife and I... Uh, We'd like to welcome everyone to the cottage courtyard at Graithwaite. The Lake District is a place that's really close to Helen and, and my heart, so um, I'm hope, hopefully we've opened your eyes to the beauty of the north. And the sun's come out as well, which is fantastic. <laughs> as a young boy, Jeremy, you have two favourite sayings. Mum, can I please have another biscuit? <laughs> and Dad. Can I please have another biscuit? <laughs> I first met Jeremy at St Peter's School and to be honest with you, for the first few weeks I didn't know his name. I just knew him as Wackiest Mate. <laughs> However, like Jeremy's chinos, our friendship only grew tighter with age. <laughs> Bridesmaids, uh, don't they just look unbelievable today? <laughs> it, it honestly has been an absolute pleasure getting to know all of you. I know you've all been an unbelievable support to Helen, good times, bad times, through, through so much, and I know she loves you like beyond words for that, so thank you very much indeed. <laughs> to my ushers, there's a reason why you're all my ushers, and that's because you're some of, my, uh, some of my greatest friends with whom I've shared the most cherished memories. Uh, and long may that continue, so uh, thank you very much. suitor gets from his future father-in-law. I do like to think I got the suitable once over from his Helen's brother David. I knew David for a cruelly short time, however his love and adoration for Helen, his mother Di and his sister Steph was unquestionable. It's absolutely heartbreaking that he's not here today, however I know that he gave us his blessing and I know that he would have absolutely loved today and they would be the proudest bloke in the room looking at you right now. He might not have left Durham with the degree of sporting athletes that his parents would have hoped for. But looking around the room today, it's clear that Jeremy left university with something far more valuable than a red brick education. But you can't help but notice the amount of truly good friends you made over those years ago. Not sure about this, lad, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's a sweet lid, Joe. That's sweet. Joking 
inside, for me, the quality of your friends truly reflects exactly the type of person that you are. That being one of the funniest, most entertaining, most loyal friends I've ever met. Although it wasn't planned, in a strange yet apt twist of fate, uh, this weekend is Father's Day. There is one father who's been missed more than most today, and that is, of course, Campbell Tate. I never got to meet Cam, though I've been lucky enough to learn little bits of his character and about the man he was um, through stories and anecdotes, usually over a glass of wine, in the early hours of the morning, with those who knew him best. He's a six foot three criminal defence barrister, loving father, and proud Scotsman. I question whether this groom in front of you, this six foot, not very much English accountant, would have cut the mustard with Cam uh, when I was trying to woo his beautiful daughter. Albeit, I'm sure I would have endeavoured to convince him that I was indeed the one. One thing that is unquestionable, however, is how proud he would have been to see his beautiful daughter today and to see what a remarkable woman she's become. Now, whilst I cannot begin to take any role of, of a father, what I can do is reiterate the promises that I made earlier today and that is that I will love you, I will cherish you always, until death do us part. The past seven and a half years have quite literally flown by. We've shared so much together in this time. We've moved in together, we've watched grizzly bears in Canada, we've skied drunk in Aboreas. You know, I've watched you graduate university twice, both with first class degrees, which puts me very much to shame with my Desmond Tutu. Um, but everything we do is underpinned by love and, and laughter. I've, I've never laughed so much at the most ridiculous and stupid things as I have with you. You support me in everything I do and every decision I make, and you put up with the good and the bad. From the day we met in 2010, I've never, never, ever wanted for anything else. And that's kind of pretty amazing, really. So I ask myself the question of what it is I love about Helen so much. So I'm going to start with the very obvious. You know, I love that from the day we met to right now, you're always the most beautiful woman in that room. I love that you put everyone's feelings above your own and that you possess a genuine kindness of such rare quality the world would be a much better place with more of it. I love that even when we do bicker and argue we always end up in fits of laughter. I love your complete lack of awareness about just how incredible you are which is, uh, which is very lucky for me because you are no doubt left about now had the penny drop. <laughs> but, but, but most of all I, I love that whilst you're the same woman that I met uh, all those years ago I've been able to witness and I've been able to share your journey with you. Your incredible strength and grace through the worst of all heartbreaks. How you bounced back from this to achieve everything you did at university and then turning this into a fantastic career centered around using your own experience to help others in need. You really are an amazing woman. I cannot wait to continue this journey with you and I mean that from the bottom of my heart. And if we are able to build a family together, I hope one day to be sat by your side where my grandparents are now, being able to reflect on what a hell of a journey it's been. I love you with all my heart. So, can please everyone be upstanding for my final toast to the beautiful bride. The beautiful bride.